Battlefield of Eternity, uh, Chili Mountain against Team Rage Quit. We're on play day number six right now, everybody. And, well, it is the first game of two because this is the best of two. Now, I keep repeating myself and I feel a little bit silly and sorry for the people that watch every single game here. But then at the same time, there's a lot that always come in as like, I don't understand. Best of two, like what's going on here? It's like, can you explain the system? Is like, what's happening? So to give you a quick overview, we're down to the final eight teams. We play around Robin with best of twos. You win both of the maps. You take three points. You tie with your opponent. You take one point for the leaderboard at the end of the round Robin. The top three teams move on to the grand final the offline part in uh, Paris when again total there's 12,000 euros of prize money on the line and well there is still another slot that you can get we need four teams at the offline final in total so the top three they qualify directly and the other teams in the standings they go through a gauntlet to determine the final team to get a ticket for Paris and therefore you want to be as high up in that ranking as you possibly can obviously so with that being said we have Lul Nara as our first pick okay so for Chili Mountain we have uh, Modchek subbing in again so apparently Masquerade is out for the entire weekend yesterday already Masquerade wasn't playing and Modchek subbed in for him which then also resulted in they wait no Dino was playing the main tank for the team so yeah this is obviously with this many games being around you can't expect every single player always being able to make it so a lot of the teams are playing with a sub or so every now and then and this game is absolutely no uh, exception there also for everybody that is still a bit confused yes this is indeed team uh, team wah. so chili mountain locked in team wah, for the master slash and for what is potentially the last season of the ccl so that's kind of the agreement that they currently have the same by the way also happened with the hardos and with oxygen esports so in case that you aren't aware of that that also happened uh, and yeah dino with a Tyrael pick okay and banana age is playing stukov here yeah, I would assume that we're going to get that judgment again. That's what they played, I believe, yesterday. Was it Towers of Doom? I don't really know if it was. I can't remember if it was Towers of Doom. I think it was. But yeah, they played Tyrael with judgment, and they could do the same thing here again. Now we got a Nuburak and Liming quickly locked in from Chili Mountain. Now one of the reasons why you also lock Liming in that quickly is because she's amazing on Battlefield, and at the same time, you can't counter pick a Nuburak with Liming and burn the cocoon down with disintegrate, so that's another one. They go for double resets. Genji and Li Ming. And win gets taken here as well by Renella. And off we go. We got our final double pick for the red team. As we're still looking to see what Ultralisk is gonna take here. And of course we need a side laner too with Blaze and Ural being banned. Uh, what are we gonna get from him now? Actually, interestingly enough, we don't have a sideliner for either one of the teams. There's the Haka, and we get Mayev together with that. All right, Hogger comes in, and that is the map being set. Battlefield of Eternity. We get the stage ready for our first game between the two teams here. Chili Mountain going up against uh, Rage Quit Gaming. Let's go. Game number one. Uh, well, Team Rage quit with Shiza Kid on Anubarak. We got Limu and Ronella working with that Anduin and Genji combo. So we're going to see the light bomb again with Genji's Swift Strike engage. Especially dangerous, of course, towards Lunara and Stukov. No Game No Live is playing Liming for a few more resets here for them. We got Shy on Hogger. And on the right side of the map now, Dequaza with Dehaka for Team Wah, aka Chili Mountain. We got Dino on Teriel, Modchek on Lul Nara, Banana H and Stukov. And Ultralisk is playing as my F. So, yep, with that, we have the stage set for map number one. A bit of aggression here from the red team already. They're obviously the favorites heading into this. Sub or no sub, doesn't matter too much. If you're surprised that Dino is playing Tyrael, it's easily explained by Masquerade missing this weekend and them having to sub somebody in. That someone is Mochek who plays DPS and therefore someone else had to move into the role here. That's exactly what we're getting at this point. Okay, so with all of that, we have Li <laughs> Limu uh, jumps in, missed the target a little bit. And nearly became himself the target, but able to move out. So good for that. But yeah. We got the low blow on level 1 for Stukov. 
the ardent restoration over here for uh, Tyriel. And up at the... Oh, there it is. The first kill in the game. Nice. And it is a kill for the blue team. So, Dainu falls. Renella nearly died as a counter kill. But, oh, not able to quite make it here. That engage from Shizza Kid also just missed the mark. But they're going for Mochek. Limu! He might die! And he does! Down he goes. Easy kill. That's the end of Genji and the first kill for Chili Mountain. So they use the opportunity to go for the camp. Shouldn't be too tricky for them to lock that one in. At the same time, we have them pushing straight through the bot lane for even some tower damage. And I gotta say, they're gonna get way more here than I initially thought they would. Might even rotate someone towards the top. Ultra Disc is already on his way to get the second camp. So that's what they're trying to play for. Okay. But yeah, this is a nice early game lead for Chili Mountain in structural damage. Nothing insane, but obviously you're just working on this slowly but steadily. A bit of body blocking on Hogger, and that might end up with a kill. Hogger! Ha ha ha! Clutch! <laughs> yeah, close, my friend. That could have been a kill at the top lane for sure. Okay. Mm, what do we have for now? is just a battle over the next camp, but I don't really think that there's going to be a full engage from uh, Rage Quit Gaming. Uh, instead, we have even a pause. Not sure if they're going to have, if they're having some problems here with only voice, or if there's some serious disconnect issues that are currently going on. I certainly hope not, especially Ultra. This is, of course, someone that in the past always had some problems, but for the longest time, his internet seemed pretty stable. Uh, I mean, it was a pretty painful process, apparently, for him to get that done. He lives very remotely, apparently, in uh, Germany, in a pretty small village, and it was a pain for him to get a stable internet connection going, and had multiple talks with the provider that apparently had to fix a couple of things on their end, and as you can imagine, they're usually not really willing to do shit like that. So, yeah, but it's fixed by now. Whatever the problem was, it seemed like it was a minor issue, maybe just some, some Discord problems or something with the voice channel. Either way, we're already back. We got a tiny lead in experience here. Two kills to one. And off we go. We got our first objective up on the map. Time to party. Yeah, and the blue team is doing initial damage. Also trying to go for a kill here that they can't that easily get. The Quasar's, of course, looking for the drag. Oh, the reaction from no game, no life. Yeah, never faced Chicka Bush and he was ready as he walked past it and was like, all right, there's a good chance that the Haka is actually here. Or somebody else for that matter. So let's just make sure that this is not going to become a problem. But the halftime show is nearly done and it seems like the blue team is going to get the initial lead on it. It's way closer than I thought, but the blue team indeed runs a 1000 HP advantage on the shield for now. Okay. Mm and once again... There we have a full commitment by both teams, and that should be a win for the blue team. And it is 600 HP. Yeah, that's not a whole lot. That could have easily gone the other way. Way closer than I expected after the initial halftime victor show victory for, uh, for them. A little bit more aggression from Limu. But I think this time he made a mistake. Yeah, he dies. So no chance for Genji. It was a very good coordinated effort by Chili Mountain as they locked this down. And I'm lying. I'm actually fucking lying. They lost it. The blue team lost the Immortal. Chili Mountain won it with 600 HP left. What? I completely blanked on that and didn't even realize it. They turned it around and won the Immortal and then they got the kill. Which now right away leads to them dropping the top four. Damn. Damage adjustment and build adjustment with level 7 now. As Seeker is being chosen by Li Ming. So really trying to go for that on point single target damage. Especially against the Immortal too. Not sure if that's the right choice here given the circumstances. But damn. That's quite something now, I gotta say. Yeah, that is a lot worse for Ra Team Rage Quit than I expected. I thought they had the Immortal. I, I really did. 
I was like, all right, they lost the hero, but they still have the immortal. They're not going to get a lot of value out of it, but it's fine. And yeah, then I realized, wait a second, wait a second, that immortal has the wrong color. <laughs> and now we're looking at a very significant top lane lead, and they're going down to the bottom of the map too, trying to uh, get another kill. Now, the lead in experience is another issue. She's a kid. Ooh, Anduin with a save. Yeah, Anduin is saved. But they're still getting damage out against the rest of the team, and that bottom that bottom tower does not look good. Look at Ultralisk. He's waiting for Li Ming. Can't get her. No Game No Life is really paying attention to all of this. I, I gotta admit, like he's doing very well on that end. But they still are in trouble. Mochek, on the other hand, is also very low in HP and has to retreat here. But they got the entire wall. They took the tower tower down too. I'm still amazed that nobody died here. I mean, really. I would have expected multiple heroes to fall in these encounters, especially given how many of them just moved away with a couple of hit points, had to tap the fountain, had to retreat, some of them even go back to the Nexus. So they're going for the camp. I like that, prepping for the Immortal, but it also means that the blue team is now having trouble defending the bottom fort. Now they take my F down, that's big, but they also lost more than 50% of the hit points on the fort. That's a big problem. And of course, halftime show, I guess Team Rage Quit might still win that, but you look over to the experience of Chili Mountain, and they will have that early level 10, especially now that the Haka is retaking the control over the top lane. So level 10 will be an issue, and uh, it's going to take Team Rage Quit way too long for them to get that. And keep in mind, I still expect Judgment here. And there it is. Judgment for Dino. No sanctification. He played Judgment already yesterday. And here we are. They should be able to take the Immortal. Yeah, with level 10, I mean, you're not willing to fight this, are you? So already they're starting to tether Limu back in. And Nuburak is in trouble. Here comes the Haka. Yeah, level 10 soon for the blue team too, but just not in time to fight for the objective. So yeah, kind of unfortunate for them. But yeah, that is... But, I mean, now they can at least try to fight. Light Bomb maybe on Genji. Are they making the play for Lunara? Not yet. Leaping Strike for the repositioning. She's like hit. Dodging out on the tether. <laughs> and Ubarak on the leash. Beetle on a leash here. And that is not only the end of the four, they're gonna likely gonna get more. And they take Li Ming down. Oh boy, that hurts. Here comes Judgment. If they get another kill, if they get Renella now too, there's the tether. That's gonna be the end of Anduin. It's a double kill. They're going for the triple with the play for A- Oh, Jesus. And Nuvarak is dead. Genji is down. Oh my god. They are absolutely speed running that bot lane now. Ooh. I mean, boys. Three kills to six. One and a half level leads, the fort gone, and now we're having the bottom wall destroyed. The keep, they might hold it, but it is going to take significant damage here. And I know, I'm not even sure that they can hold it. Yeah, that's an absolute disaster right now. We are only eight and a half minutes into the game. So yeah, the keep is down to less than 50% of its HP. They're not pushing hard enough to take it down here. But that is a significant advantage, plus a level 13 talent that is soon going to be ready for them. And of course the map control has fully been claimed by Chili Mountain as they are now going for additional camps and playing around that. So yeah, here we go. The Quasa trying to do the same thing at the bottom of the map now. 25,000 damage for Lul Nara. Li Ming is sitting at 31k. And here on the right side, we got Dino and Banana Age together with Modshake just doing their thing here. Okay, so far so good. It's all about the next objective for the time being. Obviously, as you can see, the, the blue team is freezing the lanes right now. They're just sitting tight. They're trying to get the experience. The minions get to them. Can't get too far out here or you're going to fall. And well, they might already have screwed up a little bit. Here comes the play for Anubarak. But thankfully Anduin is ready to save the day for them here. We now also have level 13 for Stukov. Picked it a bit late with the virulent reaction. 
Top side, double camp is moving in. So they're attacking on two fronts again. They have the Haka at the top now. He can always join the battle at the bottom of the map with a quick burrow. But they are heavily sieging up on this with the camp that they have. And the Haka is trying to also get damage done top side. So it's two angles that they're playing at the same time here while the objective is being announced. And this is the first keep of the game. So bottom keep has already fallen and there is just massively ahead. 10 minutes in, the catapults don't hurt that much yet, but that's going to push the lanes out time and time again. You're losing vision, you don't have enough of that. Makes your plays a lot more risky and harder to execute. So, yep, there's the move. Three kills, two, a six. And it is not looking good for them even a little bit. So, quick move towards the top. Yeah, here they are, judgment, and goodbye. Li Ming is dead. The disc misses this time, but they just won the halftime show. It's 13 talents on the side of Team Rage Quit, but that is just too late. Yeah, not possible for them anymore. There's no way they win the 4 versus 5, is there? I mean, if they can get a quick drop on a one target, maybe with, yeah, maybe with a good Genji engage, but they're all playing so far spaced out that it doesn't seem likely. But Mojek is low. He gets the heals from Stukov and that keeps him in play. But Limu really is trying to come through for the team and getting the kill on the back line. It hasn't happened yet. Li Ming is coming back. So they are just farther and farther behind on the objective battle. But at least they haven't lost the thing yet. And they're still trying. They're still trying, trying to fight this one out. So there it is. 15 to 13, two level advantage. The stats lead alone is giving them the edge. The Harker is pushing the bot lane out a bit further. Limu looking for Bambi over and over and over again. But now he's dead. Genji trying so hard to get them the battle, but it doesn't work. Judgment on Anduin. Anduin has been judged, has been found guilty of being fucking annoying. And Uburak, also dead. And win, still alive somehow. Still annoying. But it's not gonna... <laughs> but Dino wants him, Dino's gonna get him. The desperate prayer over here. And just sitting down to pray a little bit is not gonna change the outcome of what's happening here. And also, Dino, can you please calm the fuck down a little bit? I mean, please? <laughs> He's chasing them throughout the entire map. Limu finally gets a kill. I, by the way, love that Chili Mountain completely abandoned the objective. And I was just like, wait, what? Immortals? Objectives? I thought there was Dota too. I was like, ah, okay, okay, sorry. I thought like team fights. Okay, my bad. They got level 16 now. And yeah, they can obviously delay this slightly to allow Stukov to be back. You want to make sure that you have your support when you're pushing. And Ultralist takes that little window to go for another camp. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's like all over the place here. But okay, so they are taking a camp too. They obviously know that they're going to lose the objective. Which means that the top lane is going to be attacked. And it's noteworthy that the entire wall has been destroyed. So that's not going to be helpful. Now that Stukov is back, they went for the Immortals, so Stukov has plenty of time to move towards the top lane and join up with the rest of the team. And they were thinking about stealing this one. They don't even have to. You have camps at the bot lane by yourself, and you have catapults now pushing the entire time. I mean, in an ideal world, you would have probably rotated the Haka down and then move him up with the global. But either way, this is a good spot for them to be in, and all they got to do here is take, of course, the keep down. If they can get more, then, well, even better. But let's go. So, there's the next little play. Light bomb into the back lane. And Lunara. What an engage and what a double kill. Nice. That one was a beauty. Well done by Team Rage Quit. Uh, so the plays, they're coming in late, but they are executing them. Allows them to go for Ultralisk too. And Ultralisk dies. Now, can they save their keep? No, of course not. But at least they were able to get that kill. Now they're trying to go for Dino. He's maybe going to get away. Probably not. Nah, he dies too, but the core is still safe. So just to give you a bit of an idea, I mean, check this one out. This one was beautiful. So right there, they execute the plays. Hobbity hop on Lonara, and then all of a sudden it's the light bomb engage, and they're getting the quick kill here. They drop not only Lonara, but also Stuko within seconds. And that is just how you execute an Anduin Genji combo to perfection.
So the core took still some damage and the keeps are gone. So it's not really that they all of a sudden, you know, win the game or anything. But they got the kills in. They have 8 kills to 12 now. They're only one level behind. They can even pressure the bottom fort a bit. But that was really well played. Might have been too late. But look good. Now there's already the virulent reaction. Uh, they nearly got a kill of that too. So yeah, Banana Age nearly helped them to get a kill here. That bottom fort should fall. Maybe not. No game, no life wants it. He really does. The man is a little bit frustrated here. But here comes Dainu. Genji. Oh, just as he went for the burrow. Yeah, that light bomb connected. Not do anything. But they still get the fort. The problem is that Anubarak is going to fall. Anubarak is down. The fight continues. They're trying to go for Limu again. And they can get him. He gets the counter kill on the other hand. So he gets the counter kill. But they also took the crybaby down. Andon is dead. Li Ming in the corner. She's going to die too. And of course this is going to be the end of the game. We already have catapults that are approaching the core here. Two are already in. A third one is coming. I guess Hogger can deal with at least those. But the rest of the team is already coming now. They're already moving in. And well that's going to be game. So, very nicely done. Very well played by Chili Mountain. They have 16 kills to 9. Catapults in Dinger as usual for the mid tower here. Yeah, license will immediately be revoked. But now that they're trying to farm Hogger a little bit, the core is losing hit points quickly. Down to 66%. The level 20 talents are available as well. And yeah, they got the entire setup. Level 20 talents are in play. That's the end of the game. The lead in the series for Chili Mountain against Team Rage Quit. GG. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Map number two, Towers of Doom. Chili Mountain, everybody. In the lead against Team Rage Quit. Oh, yeah, thank you too. Good work, my man. Will do. Why is that triggering here? <laughs> okay, that notification that came, I actually don't know why that triggered, but fair enough. Uh, yep, thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Now, guys, we're heading into Towers of Doom, our second map. And, well, the Haka gets banned this time. Apparently, they're a little bit tired of the Quasar's licks. Tracer is also getting banned out. Now, that disappoints me a bit because I was hoping to see a Tracer. But then again, Dino obviously has to take the main tank role today, so he can't. Blaze, first pick. Okay. The Quasar is back to his old channel again now that we're here on Towers of Doom. And... Dehaka got banned out. So you can't go for any global plays. Obviously, Blaze still insane. I mean, Dequaza has pretty much been playing Blaze over and over and over again. When we talked in Miami, he just said, hey, I want to play other heroes, but they don't ban Blaze. What do you want me to do? Uh, it's still the best one by far. So, yeah. Uh, Shy with Leo. Easy rotations between the lanes. And there we got the fruit fly. So apparently the uh, notification alert there a second ago was already a bit of an omen. Fred! Shut up. Get the fly swatter out and slap that thing. So the fruit fly is in the house. Got a bit of global action for them. There's Tyriel and there's Hanzo again. Yeah. I mean, again, you gotta understand what's going on here. So with Masquerade not being here, they don't have a main tank. So they play Tyriel with Dainu, and that's one of the main reasons also why they go into Judgment over Sanctification, and they're just playing super aggressive here. So with Tyrael setting those stuns up, you can follow up with Blaze, Hanzo can follow up. That's actually something that they did, I think, yesterday, maybe the week before, where they just, like, chained those abilities properly, and it's quite powerful. If you have, like, these coordinated on-point attacks, you can do a lot with it. But... Dino is obviously a little bit more limited in his tank pool than Masquerade would be. And he's just playing things that are more down his, you know, his alley. Very mobile heroes. So he plays his Tyrael pretty much like he would play, I mean, a melee assassin more or less. And that's what they're doing here. They're really playing this quite nicely with one chain after another that just sees the main target and takes it down. And it works well for them, especially since this weekend at least they're going up against some uh, opponents that uh, are placed lower in the ranking. Now we get Murden on uh, the blue team now, and together with that, Sylvanas. Banana H, we still need a support. 
I mean, they're playing really aggressive already. At this point, if Ultralis goes into a Kerrigan, for example, I wouldn't even blame him. And then Banana H comes. Yeah, there it is. And Banana H, but I, I was just about to say, if they're going in and taking Kerosene right now, then it's just a full-on dive combo. But yeah, they got Lucio, also, of course, incredibly strong here. But Kerrigan, Tyrael, Blaze. I mean, maybe here Dino switching it over into a Sanctification. Maybe they're going to change it up a little bit. But of course, the combo potential with the Judgment is still there. Now, either way, we got Limu on uh, the team with the last and final pick here in this best of two series. So here we go, Towers of Doom, and it is Cassia. All right, give me those blinds. Cassia incoming, Towers of Doom, the chance for Team Rage Quit to get a point onto the board. Let's see if they can pull it off. Game number two, we are on Towers of Doom, everybody, and it's time to party. On the left side, Team Rage Quit currently down in the series with Shizakid and Muradin. Limu on Cassia, we got Shy on Leoric, No Game No Life on Sylvanas, and Renella is playing Brightwing. On the right side of the map, though, we got the red team, the former team, with Dainu on Tyriel, Mocek subbing in today. He's playing Hanzo, we got Banana H, Lucio, Ultralisk and Carrigan, and Dequaza is playing Blaze. Now, with that, we got the Ardent Restoration, again, for Dainu, with his level 1 talent. At the same time, the Charged Strikes, and the Might of the Banshee Queen. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, so... Carrigan is already a little bit jealous. She just looks over to Sylvanas like, hey girl, there's only one queen in this game, and that is me. The Queen of uh, Blades. Uh, Banji Queen, my ass. Let's go. So, let's see if Ultralis can pull that off and drop Sylvanas a little bit. They're already getting aggressive down here. That's how you have to start the game. Here comes Carrigan. Yep, and there's the lock. I <laughs> told you, told you. Who is he attacking? Sylvanas, of course. Yep. Yeah, if you are a melee assassin player, especially if you're ultralist, you can never skip leg day. You gotta put your big boy boots on, get that backpack ready, and then just carry the team to a victory. Uh, strong calves was being needed here. Lift with the legs, never with your back. Alright, so, Dainu, low, but can they get the kill here? I, I mean, they have to get at least one, right? Stormbolt hits before the jet propulsion does. Limu is still fighting it out. Sylvanas, the first one to fall. Killed by Carrigan. I told you she's jealous. I told you she's jealous. So, two kills to one. Tyrael exploding onto this, but we have the double kill against Team Rage Quit. And they also took their camp. And that means that the blue team did not take theirs because they instead went aggressive. And that could turn into a bit of a problem for them. Normally you have the camp going up one against each other. Now they got to spend a little bit more time dealing with this here. And it might result also in Chili Mountain going for an invade on the left side. As we have Limo already dealing with the Dinos just saying hi real quickly. And they got also level 4 talents in. Possession has once again been taken. Yeah, and they give it up at least for now. There's the combo attempt. Not perfectly executed, so they got away here. But no game, no life is low. Kerrigan is dead. Those two, they have a little bit of a catfight going on. Kerrigan against Sylvana. Sylvana's against Kerrigan. It's all a question of who the real queen is in this one. So, I mean, I got my money on Kerrigan. If your Nick is the queen of blades, I mean, you don't gotta convince me anymore. Cassia is down and so is Brightwing. Sylvanas makes it out of the fight. But the camp can now be stolen. So four kills against two. But very aggressive stance from both teams. I like that Team Rage Quit had the balls to initially go over and try and take them down there. But Chili Mountain is playing this pretty cool, calm and collected. And is trying to do their thing now. Alright. By the way, I kind of feel that Chili Mountain, honestly, they missed a bit of an opportunity here. I mean, they should have just like slightly renamed and uh, went for Chili Mountain with a spicy place. I mean, at that point, your logo also writes itself. You just can go for a massive pepperoni. So <laughs> that would have been way better. The chilies are back in the house. It's time for the spicy place. Oh, yeah. So uh, there's an opportunity that was definitely lost. At some point, we're going to go for that. And people are going to be, that's not what that means. So, yeah. It's the same with the Sudoku. But, yeah, either way. 
But Chili is right here with seven kills to two, and <laughs> they open that bot lane up very quickly. I mean, already they are ahead by roughly 11, and they've taken the lead in talents. So good for them. And well, their Sylvanas eliminated once more. Told you, it's a battle. Carrigan also doing her thing. Fantastic character, by the way, Carrigan. Like, the lore on that is actually pretty uh, amazing. But yeah, anyways, now we got towards the top, Blaze and Leo. Still rocking that side lane, but Dequaza, is he gonna get that? No, he's not gonna get that before Leo is there. Ah, uh, he is? Nice! But holy hell, that couldn't... I mean, that was frame perfect, pretty much. So, yeah. Uh, that nearly backfired there for them. Well, probably not backfired. I guess he would have gotten an assist anyways. Carrigan was probably already on the way. She's here now. Uh, Ultralisk coming in deep. I, by the way, appreciate that Ultralisk, with the amount of Carrigan plays that he has, that he actually invested into a proper skin for her. Because that skin is solid. Absolutely solid. Definitely the best one that we have. And you gotta appreciate that. If you have a player that really does that a lot, that's really good. I mean, one of the first hero that I got skins for was my Vala, for example. So whatever you play the most makes obviously sense. But especially here, when you're showcasing it to millions of people that watch your games, then, you know, you gotta do it. Oh, nice dodge on the jet propulsion, but Lucio booped him back in. And that's the end of Shizakid. Judgment! You've been judged and you've found to be unworthy. So, easy kills. Murden is down and so is Cassia. With this, we have 11 kills to 2 and a 1.5 level advantage for Chili Mountain. Sylvanas and Leo are trying to push through the top a little bit. And, yep. There we have our next one. Can they get a kill? That ah, that would have been amazing. Can you imagine them I mean, locking a kill in without level 10 abilities at the top? They would have easily jumped up in experience and closed that gap quickly, at least towards heroic abilities for themselves. Right now, the bell tower control is clearly in the hands of Chili Mountain as they are running this with 5 versus 2. Okay. And down to the bottom of the map, we got Dino. We got um, Mochek already here as well. And here we go. 11 to 2. Oh, Leo! Alter Freund und Kupferstecher. What happened to him? He's dead. Yeah, they're trying to go for uh, Sylvanas and... Pfft, what? Saved by the fly. But again, uh, Sylvanas gets killed once again by Carrigan. So it seems pretty clear at this point which one of those two is winning the catfight. Carrigan is just a little bit too good at this. Another combo, another lock, another CC chain. Ultralisk! Oh, no! Gets killed by Leoric. Yeah, maze to the face, goes for the big swisher move, and that's that. Alrighty, so we got 14 to 3 kills, nearly level 13. Got a single altar spawning, 24 points to 36 now. 21,000 damage for Hanzo. Yeah, judgment on the 30 second cooldown right now. They're not going to be able to retake this one quickly enough. And well, a Dino is already starting to come in again for another attack against Sylvanas. If they had cooldowns ready, especially Judgment, Sylvanas would have just been toast here. But that's a Lucio kill. Beautiful kill by Sylvanas in particular. She came in and dropped the Wailing Arrow here with perfect timing. Dino, yeah, that's the moment where he wishes he had Sanctification. Is trying to dodge them out and they at least lead to a kill against Leo. But Tyrell dies too. Sylvanas, on the other hand, murdered by Kerrigan again. Okay. And now they can still fight for the bottom bell tower. Uh, sorry, for the bottom altar. The bell tower has already been retaken, but they're looking for more kills. Tyrion is going to be back in five seconds, so they're going to rejoin that fight. <laughs> it's a fun game, it really is. She's a kid with a storm bolt. Oh, the jet propulsion. Yeah, if that pain train is headed for you and you get hit by it, and of course the fruit fly is not making it there. Leo dead again. Carrigan saves herself with a chrysalis. Looks for another combo, finds it, and takes down Cassia. Jeez. I mean, kill after kill after kill after kill. Half the heroes that died here 
revived and were back in the battle towards the end of it again. Look at Tyrael for example. He could have always used the judgment as he moved back in and just as they lose the bell tower they're reclaiming it. So yeah, that's another five shots fired with Lucio now channeling and they maintain that two level advantage that they built for themselves. So 19 points on the core for now. But Holla die Waldfee. They are really really bringing the pain now. Okay, so top side, we got no game, no life. Are they going for it? I think my pig whistles. Where is that sanctification when you need it? Uh, <laughs> a storm bolt. There it is. Judgment, the follow up stun. Sylvanas. Yeah, they save her. Sylvanas is alive, but Muradin is dead. Mirrodin is dead. Oh boy, <laughs> they're killing everyone. The arrow misses, but the reason why it misses is that everybody is dead already. Only the fruit fly survives. Level 16 talents are now available. Boy, it's getting worse and worse and worse here. So uh, right now we have the play for Renella. He's just trying to rush away from this one. And it is just not... Oh, don't tell... <laughs> if he would have fallen there, can you imagine how annoying that would be? Nearly got Hanzo'd. Nearly got Hanzo'd. Pumpkin makes it through. Two of them. And then are also going for the bell tower in the middle. Yeah, they are, they're trying to speed this up. Big time. 23 to 5 kills. Now we got a double altar popping up. There's the storm ball. Dino. Careful, buddy. Nine seconds on the cooldown. He's way too far out. He's gonna die. He's dead. A dead a dino and they explode on three, but Lucio is dead too. Now you got a bit of damage out of this one because everybody clustered up in an attempt to take Lucio down. They couldn't get that bell tower in the middle of the map either, by the way. But they still controlled the one of the bot lane. Alright, so seven kills to 23. There's the channel attempt. Ultra Lisk. Zip! And... <laughs> Easy kill! Easy Katka, right there. Nice! Didn't even need that arrow. Yeah, Modchek is trying to help, but they are pretty much telling him, dude, you're not really needed here. I was like, sorry. <laughs> Geometry didn't also line up there. But yeah, so that's the second time now that he tries to confirm a kill by simply adding the second stun, and it doesn't work out because the target is already dead by the time that the arrow flies in. And they're killing just everybody here. This is just crazy. Honestly, this is disgusting. <laughs> They are murdering them where they stand. It's like whack-a-mole. They see a hero, kill a hero. Whenever anything pops up on the map, they kill it. Like, Leo dies so fast, I can't even show it. Limu is now back on his way towards the middle of the map, but it's literally 28 kills to 7. Guys, we've seen 35 kills in 11 minutes. 35 kills in 11 minutes. That's where we're at right now. Yeah, here's another one trying to go for Limu. And he's dead. <laughs> Shocking, I know. Uh, another kill against Cassia, and she's hitting the double digits. And they are going, of course, now even for the full barrage. They could go for the boss. T another arrow. I mean, <laughs> these arrows are not going anywhere today. I mean, not anywhere. Okay, so top side, we got the Quasa taking uh, the bell tower. At the bottom, they're reclaiming theirs. Camp is taken. Muradin, I mean this is desperation at this point, trying to fight before level 20 is there. He jumps in, there's the Entomb, they get the kill! They get the kill, they went for the poor man's buried alive with Entomb plus Wailing Arrow and it worked out. Hanzo is dead, but do they need him? That's the other question. Because they are still fighting. Ah, but that stun might have been a little bit too much. Or was it? Muradin is nearly dead, Ultralisk turns around with another combo, Kerrigan is down, Leo is down, Ultralisk wants Renella, but finally Kerrigan is murdered. It's a triple altar phase now, Brightwing is dead too, they're going for the Dwarf, and Shizak Kid bites the dust, it's just a question when, dodged out on the Judgment, so at least that worked out, he's dead, and now they can end the game. I mean, at this point, they can end the game. All that they need is two altars, and they're going to get those for sure. There's no way to prevent that from happening anymore. It's a double altar one way or another. So uh, they're not even going for it, by the way. They want the barrage. They want the barrage. So they're trying to go for the bottom bell tower now, as it seems. Uh, like, wait a second, wait a second. 
You tell me you can end the game by channeling these altars? Nah, that's bullshit. You have to dominate them. You gotta pee on them a little bit to just show them how dominant you really are. So let's take those bell towers and show them who's boss. Arrow flies, arrow misses. Yeah. But the barrage has started. So Sylvanas is just running around thinking, like, shit, what am I gonna do now? So she goes into the middle and gets the channels here. Down at the bottom of the map, Leo's trying to interrupt. Brightwing is dead again. She came, she saw, and she died. Veni, VD, BG. And by the way, now down to eight points. And they retook the medal. There's the first few shots fired. And Carrigan, what does she do? Instead of going for the top right altar and channeling that, nah, too easy. Let's come in and just take him down here. Yep, there's another two. Sylvanas down, Murden down. Wer hat noch nicht, wer will noch mal? Ten kills against Cassia. Hits the double digits. Now it's even 11. They, they want the bell tower and they're gonna get the bell tower. Who wants to end the game with an altar channel? No, 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 no. Real teams, they go for the full on domination. Nicely done. GG, well played. And that is victory, of course. We got 40 kills against 9. So, in total, nearly 50 kills here. Yeah, couple shots fired, and that is the end of it. Nicely done. A 2 0 victory for Chili Mountain against Team Rage Quit.